The biggest hindrance in understanding espresso is understanding the coffee bean. Typically, we assume the coffee bean is homogenous in taste and extraction potential. When I started developing the staccato shot, I remarked that coffee using only large or small particles felt like it lost some taste. I didn't know why aside from the potential that homogeneity was incorrect. In this video, I study extraction yield across sifted particle size, and I did a little bit extra. I split out the inside fines from the outside so I could measure extraction yield from both. This should help explain why an inside out staccato espresso performs better than a regular staccato shot. To give a little background, uh, this investigation started about a year ago. I studied extraction rate across grind size and that study greatly informed me about the limits of extraction. Along with some other studies, I was inspired to study the same thing across sifted particle size. Particles don't extract like you think they would because the coffee bean is not homogenous. Around the same time, I found that the inside of the bean was different from the outside. One could sift a coarse grind of coffee to get just the inside fines. Taste tests confirmed these fines were different from those produced by grinding the larger boulders finer. In fall of 2021, I worked on the inside out staccato shot as well as the lazy staccato shot as a way to utilize inside finds compared to outside finds. Both shots were interesting, but of course more processing steps were added. It was unclear exactly why separating finds would help aside from a nebulous statement like finds from the same part of the bean at the same particle size should extract more evenly. So I decided to design this experiment. For this test to be successful, other variables needed to be controlled well namely solubles and CO2. Solubles extracted from the coffee as well as CO2 gas released during extraction influences how extraction goes and how water floats. To isolate those variables, I made a lot of spent coffee grounds. They were a little clumpy at the end, so I used a coffee sifter to remove all the clumps and I remixed the fine and coarse grounds together after sifting. These spent grounds had most of the coffee solubles extracted out of them and they had no CO2 left to gas off. Each shot would be mostly spent coffee grounds with around 11% of sifted fresh coffee. I used a seven gram VST basket so that I mixed 1.5 grams of fresh coffee with four grams of spent coffee. On top of this layer was 8.5 grams of spent coffee so that 14 grams of coffee was in the basket. I topped this off with a metal mesh screen. Then I used a constant flow rate profile on the Decent Espresso machine as a benchmark for all of these shots. The flow rate was set at four milliliters per second. This ignored other optimizations like pre-infusion, pressure profiling, pressure pulsing, and blooming, but those would be interesting to study at a later time. All the shots, including the control shot, were 20 seconds in shot time. And all the splits were one were within one second of each other. This indicates that the fine grounds did not impact flow, which was the intent of the investigation. The main metric I used for performance was extraction yield based on a refractometer. A refractometer measures total dissolved solids, which is a measure that when combined with the output weight and the input weight of coffee can determine how much coffee was extracted from the input coffee grounds. Here is the route I took to produce the different particles using two grind settings. First, I ground the coffee at a larger grind setting, and then I sifted out everything less than 500 microns. And then I split that between 300 microns and below 300 microns and above 300 microns. Afterwards, I took uh, what was left over above 500 microns, I put it through a much finer grind setting, and then I sifted that into three layers. Just to note, I used the fellow shimmy to filter out less than 300 microns because it is a little faster than the crew sifter for that screen size. And then I used a 500 micron crew screen. The shimmy is rated for 200 micron sifting, but because it uses square holes rather than circle holes, it behaves very closely to the crew 
300 micron screen. I ended up with this distribution. I then pulled some salami shots using a sample from each bin. First, I pulled a control sample to measure how much is being extracted from the spent grounds. While the value is not high, it does end up affecting the measured TDS from other tests. I was, I was aiming for a spacing of 0.5 to 3 in 0.5 intervals for the output ratio, but the shots ran so fast that it was difficult to manage. For each salami shot, I adjusted the extraction yield by the control, which is 2 to 3%. Let's take a look at the final result. Here we can see the inside finds extract much faster than the outside. This shouldn't be surprising if we assume the inside of the bean is more brittle than the outside of the bean. In looking at how quickly the different grind sizes completely extract, the finer layers extract almost immediately. By the 1.5 ratio, they are mostly extracted. However, the coarser particles take much longer. This could explain why an elongate needs a three to one or longer ratio to hit the highest extraction yields. We can use this information to make a theoretical puck if the previous sifting distribution was in a puck with the same profile. This theoretically closely matches the mid-range particles, 300 microns to 500 microns from the outside grinds. I compared it to two shots, regular and staccato, which used my regular profile. Their extraction yields were higher, which merely suggests using pre-infusion bloom or pressure pulsing helps improve over the theoretical. This data shows how coffee is not homogenous and it helps give a baseline for how extraction develops, develops over time. This experiment could easily be repeated for different temperature settings, pressure settings, and other considerations, and it could be used to help better characterize coffee. Hopefully the methodology could prove useful in developing more advanced espresso shot profiles. If you like my content, apply nine bars of pressure to the like and subscribe buttons. Because I actually think that saying something like that is pretty obnoxious. But you want to be obnoxious, you might as well go all the way. <laughs>